Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading is a free course download for increasing your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in live time. The link for the download is in the description box below. And the free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High-Performance Traders, is also a free download to develop your discipline, your confidence, and a winning mindset to master the markets. Again, the download for these links is in the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, we're going to be talking about Wednesday, day three. Just a short video. We'll go over the pairs, the currencies, indexes, oil and gold, and my perspective. Looking for day three setups. Day three, we have two types of opportunities, parabolic trend trades or parabolic reversal trades. And my job is to find the instruments that are going to offer me a parabolic opportunity. Now these templates build over the three days, one hour charts, I use one hour charts, and, and that is what's driving the move if there's a best trade candidate. We're gonna break some things down today. A uh, few traders just nailed it today, and a couple of traders uh, struggling. Uh, lots of good questions, we'll talk about some of the variations. But essentially, we have either a dump and pump type of template or a pump and dump type of template. And when things break down, depending on the pairs that you follow, the sessions that you trade, we can have best trade candidates on day three in Asia, which we will look at a couple of examples. You can have best trade candidates on day three in the London session. And again, we'll look at some candidates that will offer those. So day one, day two, day three, When when is the likelihood of one of these pairs offering us a best trade candidate on day three or after day three. And then of course the New York session, my 99% of my trades are done in the New York session. There are some currency pairs. I always scroll through the different pairs looking for an opportunity for either a parabolic trend trade or a reversal opportunity. Uh, but typically the index is oil and gold. One of those will offer something uh, on a day three, and uh, sometimes it's nail and bail. It depends on whether or not there is major red news on the calendar. Uh, we had an, uh, an opportunity on day three, Wednesday today, with no major red news until later today. We have Fed uh, 4.45 this afternoon, Chairman Powell. Canadian dollar had major red news. And we'll look at uh, some of the uh, different currencies and the day counts. Talked about Monday opening range, Wednesday midpoint range of the week. And Friday is the closing range, but we can get a day one, day two, day three template for a parabolic trend trade or a parabolic reversal trade. Now we'll start off with the S&P 500 as this is the trade that I did take today. Uh, so we're talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday templates. We talk about the three levels that we are working from. Closing price, high of day, and low of day from the previous day's levels. I'm looking for entries at these levels. We'll look at some variations of that today. Several questions from traders. They did not see closing price level, but I'm going to show you some stuff today that will hopefully clarify a few things. Now, we've had a fairly strong downward market. We pump up on Monday. We pump up on Tuesday, and we're below closing price heading into Wednesday. We'll blow this up a little bit for traders to see. And again, when I talk about uh, one of the quotes I often put up is Jim Rogers, and that is that we wait, I wait until the market shows its hand and there's money laying on the floor. I'm not looking to fr front run the market or guess or have a hope trade. There's only two types of trades we're going to be looking for, parabolic trend trade, parabolic reversal trade. And you'll notice a couple of things straight away on this chart. Number one, on Wednesday, we are below closing price. We're on top of Monday's closing price level, day one, day two, day three. Now this is a one hour chart. And when we come back and look at the uh, overall big picture of what's happening in this market, again, we have a market that's been dropping down consistently. We have day one is our Monday. And as I drew in the uh, community template, we had a market that made one push on Monday, two pushes on Tuesday, and three pushes on Tuesday into the late part of the session. Now, coming back to some simple understandings, uh, as I 
constantly am, am sort of repeating myself regarding trap volume. If we just take a look at day one, day two, day three, we have traders above the closing price level of Monday sitting underneath of Tuesday's, or sorry, Monday's high of day, day one, day two, day three. Now, one of the other things I will often do is, as I mentioned, other time frame traders. I'm looking for an opportunity where other time frame traders are driving these moves. So as we head into our US 12 candle window, we are not at closing price, but we have now coiled sideways just prior to the open of the New York markets. And we're inside of our EMA. And the thesis comes back to now similar to what we saw on oil, which we'll look at again in a second, day one, day two, day three, for a parabolic reversal opportunity. We've got traders caught up high. And so several traders asked, well, you know, you weren't at closing price, but let's come back again and just look at, if we just zoom out on the 15 minute chart, we have the closing price from Monday right above there. And as I mentioned to other traders, number one, you've got to be thinking setups. And number two, you also have to be aware of trap volume and levels. And again, there's only two types of situations that we that I'm looking for, and that's the reversal or the trend trade. And clearly at this stage, I don't wanna be counter trending this market because if this market explodes out, now I'm targeting potentially a range expansion opportunity. And if it's gonna go down even further, this could go down to the low of the week, day one, day two, day three. So. Uh, when I look at stuff like this, again, we've come down from our other time frames. We're down on our five minute chart now, and we are already in a broken down market. And when I go even to the shorter time frame, our one minute chart gets us right in at the open. And the thesis is this is going to collapse for a measured move. And potentially, if we zoom out to our five minute, we could keep going. This may go to the low of the week, no idea. Doesn't matter, this opportunity gave a very clean parabolic blow off for easy free cash on our Wednesday, day three. So point I'm making is stepping back, looking at the larger template. We saw the exact same template on oil a couple of weeks ago, day one, day two, day three. The market broke down through the closing price level. You'll notice again, uh, closing price on day three was 50% roughly of that range. Interestingly enough, isn't that a coincidence? For a range expansion back into breakout traders from that opening gap, which Gain L. Brooks would call a bull candle explosion. And same thesis, we have a neckline, we have volume trapped up high. Who has the uh, most to lose in this particular situation? Day one, day two, day three, parabolic reversal. Now. Technically, on a smaller time frame, this is a trend trade, but it's the same template. There are no surprises. Uh, so when traders get frustrated or they have, you know, I'm looking, I'm, I thought it was going to go up. Or forget about that. Just look at the templates and look for the setups. This was an easy trade also on day three. If we look at the NASDAQ, uh, same process. We can go day one, day two, day three. We've got a large down move, but we'll just look at our other time frame traders first. Now, this candle right here, this bear engulfment candle is first hour. And we're already underneath on the hourly, on the other time frame on day three. We have a neckline of volume potentially trapped up high. We can use closing price. So again, traders asked, uh, well, you weren't at the closing price level. Well, let's take a look. What level am I at? We are. There are levels that we can use that are significant because it's day one, day two, day three, which essentially is a head and shoulders pattern uh, for the reversal opportunity on Free Cash Wednesday. So if we look at our five minute chart, we'll just back this up and we'll project these levels across. Remember this closing price is a death line, a neckline area, because who's, who's trapped? Who's trapped up high on day three? If this market was to collapse, so two thesis, Oh, it's going to go up. I think it's going to go up. Well, who's trapped if this goes up? Nobody. If there was volume trapped underneath, maybe. Uh, and day three, though, the setup, if we just bring this up, we'll, we'll back this up even further. We'll go to our one hour. And we'll let's just include Monday. And we go to our 15-minute chart again. Now, this is a 15-minute chart. We already showed our hourly, our other time frame traders driving this move. 
Prior to the New York Open, we are inside at the closing price level or the neckline area, day one, day two, day three. If we go to our five minute chart, we are coiled sideways at the closing price level as the market is about to open. When the market opens, we have all time frames lined up. This is essentially a trend trade on day three for a measured move range expansion. So if we again just back this chart up and we take two types of ranges we can look at. We'll just bring this in a smaller time frame. We'll get rid of this box. And we can take closing price and closing price as a consolidation box. And we get a double 200% range expansion for a potential profit target if traders were to hold on to that. So again, day one, day two, day three, other time frame traders driving the move Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Pump, pump, pump for the dump on day three. Now we have the DJ30 and uh, there was an excellent short trade right off a of closing price today. And you'll notice if we just project Monday's closing price across, that was the area that they targeted and reversed from. But I'm going to just talk about looking at the other two indexes to me appeared weak and ready to explode. Whereas we see that we don't have trap volume on these pairs. We, we we have on this particular index, we have volume consolidated sideways in the box as opposed to having uh, a neckline of trap volume for the pump and dump. Now, this still gave an excellent trade, but we'll go back and look at the same process applied and how I filtered out looking to sell the weaker pair as opposed to selling the stronger pair. Uh, you'll notice again, we're above that. So a few traders also asked me, well, it was above. We still had an excellent short trading opportunity. You'll notice that if the index was to collapse, we had space down to that closing price level from Monday. And when we go to our smaller time frame, as I mentioned to one trader, there was a peak formation high put in place in the first hour. Now, uh, a couple traders asked, said, yeah, but it was uh, on top of the EMA. Now you have to understand, uh, you're looking for a best trade candidate. I, am, I need to repeat this phrase. I am looking for setups. I'm not trying to read a direction of a market, but there are some really obvious characteristics about this pair. We have space underneath, but prior to the pump in the New York open, we're trading into a peak formation high. This is the ceiling. And that also forms an M structure, meaning that if this market breaks through here, it's got space all the way down to Monday's closing price, which gave traders an excellent shorting opportunity. This is a five minute chart, clear as a bell. But remember, you're trading up into a peak formation. The market breaks down inside, makes a lower low. That is the setup for the pump and dump and aligning that with the other two indexes with an overall thesis that these markets were going to break down. I want to sell weakness on day three and buy, or buy strength if I'm going to be trading a parabolic trend trade. So this was an excellent opportunity. And again, one of the things that uh, I haven't talked about, but we will talk about this in a future video, is just purely measuring the distance of target level to level, closing price to closing price, and just having a decision perhaps on which pair may offer the best risk reward in terms of a best trade candidate. So this was the DJ30. Uh, I chose to go with the S&P. I just felt that the range was possibly better. Uh, not to say that one's better than the other uh, in that particular between the NASDAQ and the S&P, but clearly I had to choose one. And just on that note, when I take an instrument, when I take a pair, there are no other charts open. And I want to repeat that. When I have decided on the pair that I'm going to trade, on my main screen, I have one chart open. That is it. That is all that I'm looking at. I'm not jumping around and looking at multiple screens. So I have to encourage traders that you focus and get really laser-like focused. Don't worry about jumping around and catching other pairs or anything else. If you're, if you're struggling for consistency, Focus on executing one best trade setup, holding it to its target or managing that trade to its fruition, whether that's exiting manually to a take profit level. Uh, but understand on a, on a parabolic move, there's a high probability until it reaches the next level that that market is not going to stop until it hits that level. And we'll take a look at some other pairs. Now we had uh, Aussie dollar gave an excellent uh, opportunity in London today. We had major red news in the Aussie uh, early 
part of the session uh, evening time for North America. But you'll notice again the template, same template as last week. And I want to highlight just some important, simple characteristics. Monday, day one, we had a failed breakout that once that's confirmed on the Friday, this becomes our peak formation. Day one, longs in the market. Day two, longs in the market. Day three, longs in the market. And we have the reversal trade the previous week. Same setup. And that forms a new day count. Day one, day two, pulls inside an inside day on Friday. Day three on Monday becomes our new day one. Because the next day, we or on the same day, we break a high of day level. That starts our new day count, day one. Day two on Tuesday. And day three after major red news that takes out the high of the week. Now we're going to look at an opportunity in London on day three on the Aussie dollar. So we're looking at the Aussie dollar uh, day three Wednesday after taking out the high of the week. Similar, we've taken out the high of the day, the high of the week. And you'll notice as we head into our Europe London window, we have trapped volume up high. Day three, a failed breakout. It's obviously not a failed breakout until it gets the other side. But our thesis now is short trade. Inside, after the news blows off, we have a number level as well. Pump, pump, pump. Heading into our 45 minutes into our first hour. Lower low on the inside for the 50 pip collapse on day three in the London session on the Aussie dollar. Now there's low hanging fruit. Typically once this market gets down to that level, that low of day level, again, there's probably going to be a little bit of a, uh, just a little bit of fruit left on, on the tree, not a lot. This pair is not that volatile. You'll also notice that we traded through the closing price level from Monday, but a 50 pip collapse on the Aussie dollar on day three after three levels of rise. Three, three higher closes, taking out the high of the week, failed breakout trap volume, uh, and 45 minutes putting in the pump before the 50 pip collapse on day three. And we're looking at the year odd. Euro Aussie, uh, one hour, day one, Tuesday, sorry, Monday, uh, day one, day two, the collapse, first red day. And we had major red news in the, uh, again, the Aussie dollar in the North American evening, early part of the Asian session. And there was a first bounce opportunity on this pair. We have the uh, low of the previous week. We can bring this down. It doesn't really matter. Same thing, but the low of that held from the previous Tuesday, uh, but we had a first bounce opportunity in the Asian session. Now, whether traders decide to trade the news or not is entirely up to them. Again, uh, it's uh, experience, your skill set level, but just an easy opportunity for a continuation move after major red news on day three on uh, after first red day to the low of the previous week. A uh, very tight stop, and again, just a continuation trade, Asian session, first bounce on day three on the Euro Aussie. Pound Aussie also gave a similar setup. Uh, not much difference, just again, choosing one, executing, getting off the screen, locking in the money, and not giving anything back. Now, taking a look at gold, uh, gold did not have really any interest to me today. I'll explain why. Uh, day one on Friday, we had... Uh, a breakout that once Friday's low of day level was broken, that confirmed, uh, sorry, Friday is day one, which gave a parabolic trade in the London session on day three, which was Tuesday, through the low of Monday. Now, my interpretation of this chart currently was heading into today, we had day one shorts in the market on Monday. We had day two shorts in the market on Tuesday. And we're in the middle on day three on our Wednesday and also still at current, we were currently below the closing price of Friday heading into uh, the U.S. window. Now, we obviously traded through that, but I just saw that with gold specifically, we're still at levels that potentially may be jamming traders in. I didn't like this particular setup, sort of a first green day type template, but not really a first green day. And so uh, some traders went long, other traders went short. Uh, I liked the indexes better. I thought they were cleaner and they were set up better for a best trade candidate. So 
there we'll look at this day three trade on gold from Tuesday. So again, we can notice Friday's closing price projects across that acts as a ceiling heading into our London window. We also have volume contained above 50, bit of a major round number level. And our thesis is it's day three and we could get a retest of the low of Monday. Day one shorts are in the market. Now, when a market starts to make higher lows inside that window before the London session opens, I will raise that bar because I know that once that market trades through that for the pump and dump template, we now have a market that can go parabolic. And this gave traders in the London session on gold 200 pips almost as it blew off through the low of Monday, but also uh, down into longs from the previous week. A fantastic day three opportunity to gain the understanding of timings, levels, the behavior of price. The closing price of the week still acted as major resistance, lower lows on the inside for the pump and dump template heading into our London open market breaks down through the neckline, trap volume, major round numbers, and a parabolic collapse through Monday's closing price. And if we just look at, again, levels for potential areas of range expansion, this gave a 200% range expansion of closing price to closing price. So understand that price is always in a box. This forms a consolidation. Our thesis is a parabolic trade on day three, and gold gave traders a windfall on Tuesday, which was day three from Friday's peak formation high. So there were opportunities today on gold as well. So coming back to the parabolic opportunity, one of the things that uh, I always talk about is when you get this ramped volume, you need to be very suspicious about nailing and bailing. Now this was a fantastic 50 plus pip, maybe 75 for traders, depending on where they got filled on Wednesday for the parabolic blow off through the closing price, but also the violent and fast reversal that took out this ramped volume and the low of the day and the closing price level rejecting off closing price for coming back up. So a fairly a volatile market, but understanding nailing and bailing uh, when you when you're getting into that parabolic move that's blowing off, that this market can certainly come back fast and explosive as it did if you do not lock in the money. And you don't want to be holding on to anything that comes back and potentially may go against you. You'll notice the open of that price now is underwater as it coils sideways and explodes vertically through the low of the day. Uh, gold on day three. Now, several traders asked me about uh, West Texas. And as I talked about in yesterday's video, it was a day three opportunity. Uh, this is the one hour chart for a parabolic collapse on day three. And uh, when that happens, we're outside of the low of the week. As I mentioned to one trader, I just restart and wait now. I'm waiting for a three-day count. Now that we have this low of day broken, this day three now, I will wait and just let this market set up until I can get a three-day count, which means that tomorrow, if I have a daily level broken, this will now confirm as a day one. A day one and I'll look for a day three potentially maybe on Friday I'm not worried about it uh, this was a fantastic trade a huge opportunity yesterday and uh, several traders may have looked for the low of week uh, low of day reversal on the oil market after the New York open took traders down into the low we go down to our smaller time frame we're at the low and this market uh, has come down in the New York open uh, second hour, third hour, and now fourth hour reversal. And the next area potentially this market may target is Monday's closing price level. So this may form a day one heading into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Don't know. We'll know when we have a three-day opportunity template set up. Uh, again, some traders may have looked to be buying that low. We'll just uh, put our high of day range in place a little higher highs which is the on the inside which is the setup for the dump and pump template on oil on Wednesday again uh, I'm looking for a parabolic opportunity not so keen on trying to be the first mouse all the time uh, but if we get a daily level broken tomorrow this will start a new day count 
for day one, day two, day three. So just to repeat, there are opportunities uh, all over the place. And you can look at the other uh, yen cross pairs, pound yen, euro yen for London sessions. There was major red news in London today, 4 a.m. on the euro. But essentially day three setups, other time frame traders driving these moves, parabolic trend trades, parabolic reversal trades, dump and pump templates, pump and dump templates. You can look for opportunities on day three in Asia, London. But if you get a three session, three day opportunity in the US session, that that particular third session may close out that move for that first half of the week. And if it's on free cash Friday, we may get a market that has a huge opportunity and sometimes we get them on Thursdays. Keep it simple traders, hopefully this helps. Templates, I am not trying to read a market, I'm looking for the same reproducible type of templates because they show up over and over and over again. Keep it simple, 1% better every single day and may the markets go with you.